This week, I had the dubious pleasure of arguing with men's rights activists on the internet. Don't ask me who won, because arguing on the internet only produces losers. Let me back up a bit. A few weeks ago, Mad Max came out, and it was immediately pounced on by men's rights activists calling to boycott the film because it showed women in leadership roles, which scares their penises into hiding. I admit I was surprised. Not by the call for boycott, but there's such a thing as the men's rights movement. Huh? Men's rights movement? I thought that ended when the little rascals hit puberty. Advocating for men's rights is like advocating for snow at the North Pole. But hey, I thought, maybe I've been blissfully unaware that there were even more rights that I'm entitled to. So I decided to look into these people fighting for the rights I wasn't aware I didn't have. You know what I found? The men's rights movement is a movement, all right, but the kind you get from your bowels. <laughs> You know that line from the Hulk TV show, Don't make me angry, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry? Well, in the case of MRAs, that's right. They're angry, and I don't like them. What are they angry about? Well, it basically all boils down to a movement of guys who call all women bitches because they can't get laid. Yeah. MRAs are what happens when angry boys move on from Xbox Live. Now, a broken clock is right twice a day, and the MRAs aren't wrong about everything. They're right that unemployment and homelessness disproportionately affect men. They're right that boys have started to lag behind girls academically. They're right that male sexual assault victims don't have an adequate support network. And they're right that even though the group at greatest risk of suicide is men over 40, there's been no national strategy to address it. But then they go right off the deep end and blame every ill affecting men on a giant conspiracy of women. Now I'm sure the MRAs have done their reading and research. I'm just not sure if it's in peer-reviewed journals. According to the MRAs, this conspiracy is out to, among other things, feminize men. I don't even know what the hell this means, but Caitlyn Jenner must be giving them nightmares. Ah! According to MRAs, the glass ceiling and the wage gap don't exist. That's a great way to make a problem go away. Pretend it isn't there. I'd like them to try that with gravity on top of a tall building. Keep in mind that the men's rights movement sprung up as a, hey, me too, response to the women's rights movement. The big difference is the women's rights movement had a point. Rights have always applied automatically to men. Women have had to campaign to join the club. But the MRAs believe that women's rights come at the expense of men's rights. And if the women were asking for anything more than what men already enjoy, the MRAs would have a point. But they aren't, and they don't. What's the matter? Afraid of the competition, MRAs? You need that protected status? If you can't take the heat, get into the kitchen. Among their other greatest hits, the MRAs also mock rape statistics. A spokesman said the rape thing is a scam feminists use to gain political control and lots of money. And one of their lead voices wrote an article entitled, Study Reveals Female Rape Victims Enjoyed the Experience. And so you're thinking, what kind of jackass would publish something like that? And this is where Paul Elam comes in. He wrote that empirically inaccurate bit of propaganda, and his MRA website, A Voice for Men, is ground zero for zeros. Since most of Mr. Elam's claims of being mistreated at family court have been dismantled by his own daughter, I found him on Twitter and decided to let him know that his group's name is likewise inaccurate. I was just trying to help. So I tweeted, Your name is inaccurate. You should change it to A Voice for Some Men who have poor social skills and issues with women. You don't speak for all men. His response was, that's why it's a voice for men, not the voice for men. Clearly, you don't understand the difference. And I replied, doesn't matter. You are still using the inclusive term men. You're a voice for some men. Him, you clearly don't understand the use of language. I can't waste time on someone so ignorant. Now, there's the pot calling the kettle black. And I replied, it seems you're the one who is missing the point on the usage of language. Now, I have had to approximate the exact contents of the tweets because when I went to screen cap them, I couldn't because Paul Elam blocked me. He blocked me. How can you block me and be my voice, Paul Elam? How can you be my voice when you're afraid of my voice? What's the matter, Paul Elam? Can't handle questioning from a puppet? Is my phallic appearance too threatening to you? Voice for men, more like a voice for mice. Squeak, squeak, Polly Lamb. Squeak, squeak. Sad thing is that as stupid as men's rights rhetoric is, it's the only thing that draws any attention to the real issues hidden inside their crazy. Focus, Paul. <laughs> you need to focus. Every time you go on about evil feminists out to steal your penis, you lose the chance for real issues affecting men to be taken seriously. In other words, Paul Elam, why not use your powers for good and not batshit? Now, people who have called out Paul Elam and his ilk have become victims of ad hominem attacks on themselves, their families, their friends, their pets, their grocer, their neighbors, their mailman. That's how cowards fight. 
If you take issue with what I've said, Polly Lamb and company, take me on, not the people around me. Fight like a man. Unless you think I'm playing favorites, next week or the week after I'll deal with the excesses of the modern feminist voices, some of whom have also gone off the frickin' deep end. I'm at the sock. See you next Tuesday.